Okay, hello everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk about boosting combinatorial material discovery with uh, human insights and parallel problem solving. And this is joint work with people in from the material science department and from Caltech and Stanford University. So uh, it is widely believed that to address a lot of sustainability issues, we need fundamental breakthroughs in material science. And our research is trying to answer President Obama's call about you know, developing new methodologies as experimental uh, methodologies to speed up the, the discovery of materials. So uh, let me first talk a little bit about traditional route of uh, in, in material discovery. So if uh, the traditional workflow is first you synthesize some pure materials and then you use different kind of uh, you know, experimental technologies such as X-ray diffraction and so on to characterize the structures and the properties of the, uh, that material. Uh, one problem of this uh, traditional workflow is its throughput. Basically, uh, you have to uh, you know, synthesize and characterize one, material, uh, characterize one material at a time. And so that's greatly limited how many uh, materials you can try in a given period of time. So in this case, we propo uh, propose high throughput material discovery, uh, which as the first step is high throughput material synthesize. We actually use multiple uh, spatial technology, so we can synthesize hundreds of materials at the same time on a single silicon wafer. And then as the second step, we use uh, you know, high throughput characterization techniques. Uh, and we are very fortunate to collaborate with uh, you know, a national uh, brightest X-ray sources. So we can use X-ray diffraction patterns to characterize the structure of materials. Uh, high energy X-rays allow us to you know, uh, obtain X-ray diffraction patterns at lower Q angle and uh, in a, a shorter period of time. Uh, now, uh, the, the materials synthesized from this high throughput pipeline are, you know, unlike the, the, the traditional route, they are often a mixture of several uh, materials. So this violates the, the, the fundamental assumption of the traditional analysis pipeline. So uh, we do require new methodologies uh, to, you know, analyze the data uh, that comes out from this uh, high throughput pipeline. So to give you some numbers, uh, you know, if we synthesize uh, um, some materials on a silicon wafer, it takes roughly you know, 10 hours. Then we can you know, spend another day at a synchrotron to obtain the, the X-ray diffraction pattern. But before computer scientists step into this game, uh, you know, material scientists have to analyze all the X-ray diffraction patterns manually. Uh, by looking at them uh, on the wall, and uh, that process could uh, take you know uh, months to years to complete. And so you can see that you know data scientists and computer scientists had a big role uh, in this uh, whole picture. So to be specific, what we are solving is the phase identification problem. Uh, we have a silicon wafer, and uh, you know we have different kind of materials formed in different sample points of the silicon wafer. And so we obtain different kind of uh, X-ray diffraction patterns at different locations of this silicon wafer. And then what we are uh, asked to do is to find a small set of basis patterns so that the X-ray diffraction at each of these sample points is either going to be explained by you know, uh, a single basis pattern or by explained by the sum, the mixture of several basis patterns. So as you can immediately see, uh, this becomes a matrix factorization problem. You can basically uh, you know, uh, 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 use each column of A to represent the original X-ray diffraction patterns coming from each of these uh, sample points. And then what you want to do is to factorize this matrix A into uh, a thin and tall matrix W times a fat and uh, wide uh, matrix H. So here now, then, the, the columns of W corresponding to the uh, basis, basis patterns that you want to find, and the H is the activation matrix. So unlike you know, uh, uh, vanilla matrix factorization problem, our problem is subject to uh, additional physical constraints. And all these physical constraints make the problem significantly harder uh, than, the, uh, uh, than uh, uh, the vanilla matrix factorization problem. We developed uh, COMBI-FD, which is uh, a pattern decomposition with complex uh, combinatorial constraints. And we are able to find uh, the basis patterns, in, uh, in which case we, we call them phases, uh, that are close to physical reality, while uh, the traditional classical non-active matrix factorization cannot find any 
uh, meaningful solutions because they, they didn't take into account of those combinatorial constraints. So then we uh, further question you know, how we can you know, uh, speed up the computation. We actually use uh, you know, human insights to identify backdoor information uh, to, to speed up the computation. And backdoor variables are a small set of variables in combinatorial problems. That's once you get the correct value of those variables, then the remaining problem becomes easy. And here I'm just showing you the constraint uh, graph of a logistic planning problem as an example of, you know, uh, the crit uh, to show you the critical uh, role of backdoor variables. So we actually develop a novel pipeline of integrating human insights uh, into, pro uh, into combinatorial problem solving and to speed, uh, speed up the entire process. So we actually uh, develop a, uh, a, 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 a human intelligence task. Uh, each of these tasks is made by stacking the X-ray diffraction patterns uh, uh, for a particular, uh, for a single slice on the silicon wafer. And then the human participants are asked to identify uh, this kind of blobs that starts and ends at the same sample points and with similar kind of shifting and so on. And then we develop uh, other uh, you know, novel <laughs> mechanism for aggregating human participants' answer and uh, uh, use their uh, answer to initialize the, com uh, the com uh, combinatorial solver. And uh, uh, you know, with human uh, input, we are able to you know, significantly accelerate uh, the, the, the time to solve a, a set of very challenging benchmarks, especially for this challenge benchmark D2. Uh, we are able to bring down the solution time from over 13 hours to about uh, 16 minutes. Uh, so uh, you know, human insights can also help us you know, find better solutions. So here is uh, for a real physical system. Uh, the palladium, rhodium, and tantalum system. And in fact, a lot of these human intelligence tasks are very obvious to see. So here, uh, you know, for, this is one of the human intelligence tasks, and almost everybody would agree that uh, you know, we have these kind of blobs that stretches all along the way uh, across this entire slice, and all these kind of you know, white, uh, white things, they are background noise. Uh, so we actually run this, uh, this human intelligence task on you know, Amazon Mechanical Turk and on our, uh, in, in our classroom. And about 84% of participants, they identified you know, these kind of blobs. They belong to the same face. And, and uh, so we actually uh, use this information to initialize the, the CombiFD solver just that I just talked about. Uh, so we are able to find a new phase uh, for this, uh, for this uh, palladium, rhodium, and tantalum system, which corresponds to a new catalyst. And this catalyst is known, uh, is known as the best uh, uh, platinum-free catalyst for methanol oxidation. So uh, furthermore, uh, later on, we, you know, we thought about it. You know, human, uh, human participants are looking at these kind of slices, and these are pretty visual tasks. So we thought, is it possible that we use uh, computer vision technologies to do this kind of human uh, intelligence task? And so we can get uh, rid of human beings and uh, the entire process would become uh, fully automatic. In this case, we develop uh, parallel processes. Uh, and so we, we have a, a set of parallel processes. And each parallel process uh, is going to solve the, a, a sub-problem that is similar to the human intelligence task. And then we you know, follow the, the same kind of aggregation and initialization technology. And then we are able to achieve similar orders of the magnitude of speed up. So to conclude, uh, you know, we propose the high throughput uh, material uh, discovery pipeline. And uh, uh, you know, because of these new experimental settings that requires fundamental new methodologies uh, to solve the phase identification problem uh, for, the, uh, for the material uh, discovery. And uh, we, uh, you know, develop CombiFD, which is matrix factorization techniques with uh, complex the physical uh, constraints, and we further accelerate uh, uh, the solver using human insights and parallel problem solving. So, with that, I would like to thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Um, what about uh, getting the experiment at the same time as the analysis so that you actually direct the construction of the crystal structures in real time based on your, your observations? 
Yeah, that's 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 exactly what we are thinking for right now. So uh, so this kind of high throughput uh, experiments, what we want to do is you want to navigate in a space of possible configurations and to find the one that has the highest uh, catalyst activity. And so there is, you know, uh, then a, a natural question would be, you know, how you can use the results of the uh, of this kind of analysis to guide you through, you know, where the target line is it. Yes, and that is uh, a, an active learning uh, question, and uh, we are actively looking into this. And uh, yeah, we expect some uh, good news uh, coming uh, soon. <laughs>